Okay, so we're pretty much done with the basic system. What we have to do is explain one more file to you, and that is the one where you go and you view a topic, viewthread.php, which will show the person's original post and all the replies to that post. So let's go over into Dreamweaver and let's open the last file that you guys have not seen yet. See these files? This is my whole forum system is being powered by just a few files. And a couple of those are PHP region templates, so they don't even really count. So it's like four files to this basic system. Very cool, man. But you would want to add more features to your stuff. I'm going to open viewthread.php. Let's explain this one, and then we'll be done. And this one is a little bit tricky because it adds the JavaScript and the jQuery, and blah, 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 some CSS, and other things. But I'm going to explain it the best I can, man. I swear to God. Now, let's take a look at it live on the site. This is the viewthread.php page, and this is a thread that somebody created a topic and no one has responded to it yet. Here, let me just put in a response for giggles. There. Now somebody's responded to it. And you can see on the top of this file we have the dynamic breadcrumbs thing going on. I already explained how that works. Here, we're outputting the title. Really, this title should be up in your title tag as well. Let's see why it's not doing that section title forum oh let's make sure we got the section title I had the wrong variable name there should be section underscore title there now the section title will be in your title tag which will give you better search engine indexing Shh, don't tell nobody. I'm gonna refresh this page and you'll see up in this tab What am I doing? I don't want to show the damn section. I want to show the title. Where is that? Thread title. That's what I want. Dang it. What's wrong with you people? Now I'm going to refresh. There. What the hell's the word forum doing there? She Christ. Let's remove that. That's what I wanted. Now that'll give you better search engine indexing. When people are typing in, like say somebody typed in PHP MySQL real escape string function. That would be in the title of the web page, which is very good for your search engine indexing and better spidering of your sites. Okay, let me refresh. Now I got what I want. So now this web page, when it gets spidered by Google or whoever's spiders that are coming to put in their search engine and index it, this will get indexed for high YouTube pretty high because that's the title of the web page so if somebody typed in I need help with the MySQL real escape string function in PHP that whole little bit of data will index that page for that now I'm going to show you the script in a minute where all these things are happening but the next thing I do after we output the dynamic title here and we make sure the titles in the actual web pages title tag then we output the first post which is the original post from the author of this thread or this topic. Then after that all you have to do is simply display all the replies to it. And you may want to think about putting pagination on these pages as well. Because it could be that some people might reply this thing have a hundred different posts in it. That would make the page pretty dang long. But I'm not going to stick any pagination in mine. I'm cool with it being a long page. I'm fine with that. And eventually in mine, I'm going to have it to where people can close threads. So if things are getting too long, the conversation's dragging on, they can just, the person who started the thread can close it. But I'm not going to show you how to do that, man. You have to figure that on your own. Haha. <laughs> now past that, what we have is the jQuery functionality that's going to make a box appear that's going to be the form, the reply form. So when we click this, there's that box that appears, and that's simply a div. And it has a form inside of it. Big whoopee. It's nothing special. And then I type something in. Or let's say I forget to type something in. And I press submit. It says, please type something. Big red letters. So if I type something, submit your response. Okie dokie. Alright, so did you see how that happened? Let's type in OK again. Watch when I hit this button. Right where that button is, there's a little loader that appears. Let people know something's happening. Really, it happens so fast, you don't even have to, but you might want to. Now, you see all these 
you can't see the name of yourself, but when you refresh the page, or if anybody comes to the page after that, you see your name. When you use this form, you press somebody presses submit. We're using jQuery and its Ajax functionality to send to the PHP script, which is parse post, the one we discussed already in depth. And this type value is B for this kind of post. Now once it sends all those variables there, the PHP script processes them, and you can access the information that was the last post that somebody put up, and you just throw it into that magic div. Now I will explain the code to you to the best of my abilities. Now the PHP up top in this script is pretty simple. What we're doing first is we start session, so we have the ability to sense somebody's logged in session variables. Then we connect to our database. Now here, we're connecting to the class file for converting date time to the ago format. So you see here, we have seven minutes ago, Adam said, 18 seconds ago, Adam said. We're converting the date time to the ago format. I just think it's cooler. And we showed all about how to create that class file and connecting to it and how that all works in previous tutorials for Web Intersect. So I'm not going to go over how that all works again. Just know that it does and nicely. Alrighty, next thing is get the ID URL variable and query the database for the original post of this thread. Then we query any responses out of the database and place them into a dynamic list for display. After that happens, then we be sure the user session variables are all set in order to show them the reply button. If they're not a logged in session user, you want to give them a little line that says please log in to reply. If they are a logged in session user, we show them the reply button. Now, after that we check the database to be sure that that person's ID, the password, and the email session variables all match in the database. So let's talk about this first little block. And you can see it all right down. There it is. And it's very basic. We just capture the thread ID coming in on the URL variable. It's get ID. And we filter it using the preg replace function to get everything out of it but numbers. Then we run a MySQL query to select all from forum posts where the ID equals thread ID and the type equals A. Limit 1. We only want one row returned from this query and we want it to be the original post for the thread. So we're targeting type A. Then you get number rows to make sure that that thread exists. Say if I go to a thread and I type in 249 and that thread doesn't exist I know for sure because my forms are so new. It says error that thread does not exist. Stop playing with the URLs weenus. So I go back to 24 and that exists so it displays. You can see right here, error, that thread does not exist. Stop playing with the URLs, weenus. Exit. That's how that works. So you just want to make sure the thread's there before you go displaying something. You don't want to display something that's not there. So after you're sure it's there and the script hasn't exited, then you run the while loop to access all the variables for that first original post for that thread. That way you can easily display things. All right, collapse that back up. Now this next little PHP block is to query any responses out of the database and place in a dynamic list. And you can see all of that code occurs right here. You just create an all responses variable. That's going to be the container, the dynamic list of all the responses. So we run a MySQL query to select all from forum posts where the original topic ID equals this thread's ID and type equals B. Target only responses. No limit. Then we run MySQL num rows to see how many rows is returned from that query. If the num rows is less than one, you put in the all responses variable. Nobody has responded to this yet. You can be the first in the list. And we use the div ID of none yet div. I named it none yet div just to make good sense to you guys. If you go into the CSS, you see I have none yet div right here. And you see the style for the div, the background color, the sizing of everything in it, bordered, all that crap. So that gets displayed if there's no responses yet. But if there is, oh, you know what? I need to have an else right here. Else, close the else statement and move these in a little bit. Because if num rows is less than one, we're going to spit out nobody has responded to this yet. You can be the first. Else, you run the while loop. 
Yeah, see, it displays exactly the same, but it's coded more correctly now. The way I had it just a second ago was running just fine, but it's coded more correctly now. Because all responses then becomes a dynamic listing of all the replies to this topic. So that all responses variable has to change within this else statement. Alrighty, let me collapse that all back up. What's next? Be sure the user session bars are all set in order to show them the reply button. So, by default, you want the reply button variable to have a value of you must log in to respond. Give a link to your login page. Now, if is set, that means you can give them the reply button, which is the button that opens that little jQuery form that slides open and closed, which is on this page. I'm going to show you that form in a second. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Then we'll check the database to be sure the ID, blah, 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 all match. So what you're doing here is you're making sure, let's see, select, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, you're just making sure you, the person is who they say they are. If they're not, you give them that you must log in to respond link. All right, so that's it for the PHP. Now we get into the HTML section of the web page here, which we're integrating JavaScript into now and jQuery. So you see I have the link to the jQuery file. So you want to have the jQuery file on your server. If you're working with the web intersect files, you already do. So you can just jump up one directory, go into the JS folder, hit the jQuery file. That's all I did there. Just making sure this file is connected to my jQuery file. That way I can use jQuery within this. Then, the first thing, here let me just put a couple of lines between this so you can see real good first function is simply for toggling that little form that's in that div when they press re submit reply or right here when I hit post a response you see that div that blue div that blue box that opens up with the form in it that's all that's doing that JavaScript function is making that open and close using jQuery slide down and slide up Let me collapse that back and the next bit that we have is for actually parsing the form when somebody clicks this submit your response button that's what's going on with this JavaScript right here and I'll explain that to you right now but I'm just gonna breeze over it real quick because we already did pretty in-depth jQuery and Ajax discussions earlier in the web intersect series alright this line disables the submit button when the person presses it now function parse response that's a function that fires off when somebody clicks that submit my information button and what happens is you create variables out of all of the forms fields so whatever's in the form fields we can create a little variable from it by targeting that forms ID in the form and then we just grab the value and pack it into a variable so that's what's happening with all of those you're getting the user password the user ID the form section title, the form section ID, whatever they posted, whatever they typed in, and the threads ID. Because you got to know the threads ID when this gets parsed. Then we create a variable for the URL that's going to do the parsing of that information, which, like you know, is parsepost.php. The same one that parses the new topic form. Then we run if condition here that has an else if attached to it and then an else condition finally. In the first if, we're evaluating to see if the post body value is empty or not. If it is, we had that big red text that says, please type something. Else if the post body value dot length is less than two characters long, I'm going to put out another error. It's going to say, your post must be at least two characters long. You might want to remove that if you want to let somebody post in a space or a dot or one letter. I don't want that. At least two letters so they can say, okay or put in a little smiley face character something else if those conditions aren't met we can actually process the form and send these things to PHP so you hide your button then you show the processing animated gif that little green thing with the dots going back and forth Facebook uses it too that little blue bar thing that they use you want to show that animation that way the user knows that something's being processed because sometimes it, it can vary the time that it takes for you to uh, for your system to process things sorry I'm eating a Kit Kat but if it takes a little longer one time to process things on your website you want to let the people know 
if something's going on because there could be one of the people that it might take five five or six seconds for it to go through it might take two seconds even with today's web if something takes two seconds people are like what the hell's going on why is the page just sitting here so you gotta let them know then the next line is the actual post functionality which is using jQuery and Ajax functionality to post that data to the PHP script which is URL and we saw that is post parse.php so you send to that URL all these posted variables you see all the variables that it needs from the form now when that data reaches the PHP file it's going to process in the parse post.php and PHP is going to echo something back that's going to be right here see that function data that data variable that's going to be the data that came back. You can use that data for display or whatever. Now this is so friggin tricky. It took me like 20 minutes just to code out these few lines. It was so tricky. But basically what this does is it makes that instant div that is their reply that they see instantly. And it magically creates it. That's why I call it magic div 1 and magic div. And I put the data that is that person's response. <laughs> right back into the page so they can see it without refreshing anything but I'm not even gonna try to explain all this crap because I'll be sitting here another 15 minutes trying to explain all this JavaScript alright I'm creating elements so I'm targeting a div here I'm creating a div here you see what I'm saying basically this is how you get the person that just responded this is how you get them to see their response boom it'll be just adding new magic divs to the page every time they respond and that's it for the JavaScript man now the CSS is pretty simple I'm just styling how this div this aqua div looks in this one see topic div you see that borders the colors aqua the background colors are very light aqua you can set all the text sizing and everything that's all that's happening there then the response top div is this little really light gray guy here that holds the re whatever the title is that bullet symbol and then shows when the person posted their name is a link and it has the word said that's that div you can style it up any way you like the response div is this white box underneath that one directly underneath that box and that has the person's response none yet div we already talked about that's that's pretty much it guys now the form itself I have on the page let's see uh, yeah if you go into design view you'll actually see the main topics div there a visual display of it now all responses is kind of hidden because that's a dynamic list and dynamically made boxes now here I put it in nice code comments so you guys don't miss it this is start div that contains the form end div that contains the form so you got that code all wrapped up nice you see it's not much code at all but basically this form is all you need for sending the uh, that JavaScript function up top the information it's waiting for to do the jQuery Ajax functionality. Okay, okay, so you got it. I'm putting out the code, and you guys can come and get it, and then expand it, man. Make it awesome, because I left a lot out of this system, and what I'm going to do is make mine a lot more awesome, but on my own. I'm going to keep going. You know, I'm going to give it certain things that are unique for me, and you should do the same. All right, now, like I said, the code is going to be here on Web Intersect homepage. If you go to the homepage, you click download. I am going to package all of these scripts that I've been working on for the forum into version 1.34. So please don't ask where's the code. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this series on adding custom forums to your little custom community or member system social network that you have going. And that is the very end. I will never ever be doing a forum tutorial ever again. I won't expand this one either. We've covered most of what you need to know already within this series. But now it's on you, buddy.